I found that hill and I keep walking, keep walking, keep walking until he gets. 90% of people tap, all right, with this particular technique. I drop my shin and it's called belly slicer. Now I plan to go to find the arm bar and finish. Hey guys, how are you? Black Bulletproof here at uh, KGA, uh, home of Sambo and Jiu Jitsu Fusion, also representing the Jiu Jitsu Park Avela Bonito Barbosa, uh, Double Fight. I welcome you to Ivan Basichuk's uh, channel, Sila Bartara. And today, guys, I would like to cover one particular cradle or sequence of cradles. Uh, and it falls greatly into Jiu Jitsu uh, framework because it's actually a pass. So we'll start. Nick is going to be on his back, playing half guard. Just right? Playing half guard. Uh, we can go straight from here, right? Or we can take it one step farther and we're going to worst position. Uh, a Z guard or knee shield, just like this, all right, guys? So you can do technique from either regular half guard without shield or with the shield. It just will take one step, uh, one step more to finish from here. So guys, the thing with the shield, uh, what makes it so frustrating is because he sticks to certain height. He does not go too much out because I can pummel and get inside position. And he does not go down because I can fold over. He's somewhere here. But the thing is, he matches. No matter how my height goes up and down, right? Uh, he'll stick here. If I go high, he'll stick here. He'll go, I'll go low, he goes with me. So right, when I go low, I'll close my hands and quickly pop. And immediately fold over, all right guys? So once I fold over, that's how I deal with a uh, uh, knee shield, okay? And then I'm gonna fold on this side of my hip, of my, on my left hip, as I'm reaching around his neck with my thumb down, very important, okay guys? Not like this, thumb, thumb, down. Okay, uh, I'm collecting this leg, this head, and I'm gonna put my hands in an S grip position. That's the best position for cradle because the effort that he applies to break it is uh, going in opposite directions, right guys? So this grip, uh, elbows down, once my elbows flare, my grip kind of gets compromised. Not that it's impossible, but to me, in my feverish mind, this is the best grip, okay? With your radius always being on your partner's neck, okay? So I'm reaching over and I'm falling on this side. The reason why I fell on my side, it makes it much easier for me to collect my ass grip. Sometimes here, it's kind of harder, but once I fall, it's easy to collect. Make sure this leg is stuck out like a kickstand. Sometimes when you go like this, out of desperation, last ditch effort, you make it slows and get on top like this. Uh, all right, that might happen. All right, that's why when I collect the head and my brain, I fall with my leg like this. So if he explodes, I face going in a direction. And usually, even if you put my leg in the bottom leg, I can still high leg and pass. All right, guys, I can try to pass. And uh, lowest hanging foot right now, I put my toes down, like toes, no shoelaces, like toes. I will pull him, uh, uh, push him on his back like a steamroller, just like this. Try a position, let go, palm on my underhook, boom. And I got myself my side control. So that's your lowest hanging foot, that's your pass number one. But, you know, Let's finish this guy, all right? Let's explore other options. So here's a, a technique, 90% of people tap, all right? With this particular technique. So everything is the same. Uh, if his leg is here, I can go to collection of my cradle without uh, uh, fighting his uh, Z guard, okay? That, that's all. So right now, let's assume there was no more Z guard, and I just collect, fall, pass, and immediately, guys, after passing, I secure this leg. Super important. You want to lay this leg as soon as possible. Because if he knows the position, most people do not. But if he knows the position, he'll try and move his leg like this. So it's hard to pull that leg. All right? So that is why as soon as I pass, hook, I hook his leg. And only after that, I'll pop to my knees. I'll pop to my knees, and I will walk his leg as far as I can towards his head. Like this, like this. Until I can no longer walk. When the range of motion is exhausted, I will lift my leg, I will peeing go, and I clear my whole body on the same side. And guys, uh, the way I used to do this technique, okay, okay, yeah, you know, grapplers say nice and tight, nice and tight, which implies reduction of space, and that's exactly what I usually want on top. So my chest would be here, right? Nice and tight, nice and tight, compressed like this. But now, well, you know, the way I change this technique, I will stick this leg out until my hip, until my hip makes connection with his heel. That way, right now, I guess if it was a door, if I was here, it's like opening the door by the hinges, 
once I come up here, it's gonna be like opening the door by the handle. So I'm gonna compress Nick, not like this, but like this. And that way, he will feel ill effects of that hamstring stretch, all right? I found that heel, and I keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, until he passes. Sometimes, guys, what happens, his knee goes in his own face, it becomes even more hellacious. Like I said, most people tap. But sometimes, guy is super tough, possibly hyperflexible, uh, he's just not tapping. So, uh, uh, pass number two, I will open my hands, place it on either side of his body, one here, one here, and maintain my chest connection, I'll slide over here to leg drag position, right? Or sometimes right to straight control, or uh, side control. I can secure here, stop him from moving, and then slowly release myself away to side control. So, what I'm saying, you can go to leg drag and side control, or side control right away. Option number two, we can switch up our cradle. Let's look at the whole path again. Sorry, right? Collecting head and arm, thumb down, falling on my hip, clearing the leg, hooking his other leg, popping to our knees, walking, 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 being dog, clear whole body on the same side, Nick does not tap. That's what they do with All right, so I can pass like I showed you 10 seconds ago, a minute ago, whatever, but now I'll do something else. I'm gonna release my lock again, but watch guys, I'm gonna keep my head lock and arm in. If I kinda release like this, he can pop and spring to safety. I wanna, comp I wanna maintain uh, the grip like he's still um, uh, shrimp, so to speak, right? Sometimes I'll even my own, grab my own fat. I guess watch like this. That will ensure he's not moving anywhere, okay? Then I put my hand here. The one who was cradling his left is gonna go here. And a second arm, right here. And again, guys, watch how I collect my grip. Not like this, like this. Thumb looking towards me, so my blade is on his neck. And without any opposition, I'm gonna clear on this side, just like that, okay? I'm gonna yoke my partner up, and I'm gonna drive him in a corner. Most common reaction, people post hands or elbows, just like that. As soon as it happens, quickly, see how I'm on his uh, uh, left side? I'm gonna shut my hook. So I'm on his back. And what uh, will happen, the access to this arm becomes much easier and I can lace my leg. All right, I lace my leg, I yoke him back up to my chest and I will clear my bottom leg now. Like this. Guys, make sure that you create this money. If you loosen up and if I uh, need to show the slide on the floor, that's how he beats the position, okay? So make sure that you create this super tight and uh, there's connection between my front and his shoulder blades, right here. Okay, I'm gonna rotate on my back, triangle my legs like this. This is the base of the triangle, my left leg. I put it down and I keep up. And then I stand my knee out, find my armbar, and then. If I did not keep up, right guys, we come up to this position and hyperextension is exhausted. I need some height in order for hyperextension to happen. So that's why I go triangle and keep up. Now I plenty of room to find an armbar and finish. Sometimes, once we clear this position, we'll lift him up and we'll drop him. But now he knows not to post his arms, he just goes on his side. In which case, guys, my left knee oh, sneaks through this hole. Alright, I'm gonna post my right leg, knee sneaks through the hole, I make contact my shin on Nick's left neck, left side of his neck, left carotid artery. All right, and that is why I need this blade here, not the fat part. My arm is a two by four, four part, two part. I wanna make contact with the two part, right? And as I choke it up, as I pull my lock towards me, I drop my shin, and it's called daily slicer. All right, guys, so that's a nice, neat sequence. Uh, it still uh, fits in the framework of Jiu-Jitsu, yet it's kind of like a, more like a wrestling sambo approach, but still, you know, completely legal. Uh, I put tremendous mileage on this move, this sequence, hope you do too. Ivan, thank you very much for the opportunity to share my knowledge and expertise. See you next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And then I stand my knee out, put my arm on, and then. If I did not keep up, I guess we'll come up to this position and have the extension is exhausted. I need some height in order to have the extension to have it. So I try the triangle and keep up. Now I plan the room to find the arm on.